Hey guys, it's ETA Prime back here again, and today I'm super excited because RetroPie version 4.6 was released with support for the Raspberry Pi 4. Now you can head over to their official website, I'll leave a link in the description. You can download the Raspberry Pi 4 image right here, but keep in mind, Pi 4 support is still in beta, but this is a public beta that you can use right now, and there's lots of systems that are working great in here. Before we get into a little bit of testing, in this video I'm going to test some N64, we'll go with PSP, and even some Dreamcast, just to see how it performs on the Raspberry Pi 4 using this new release of RetroPie. I did want to go over the changelog very quickly here. Now you can read through all of this on your own time if you want to, but there are some notable changes here. So like I mentioned, there is support for the Raspberry Pi 4. It has its own dedicated image that you can download and flash to an SD card. This is still in beta. As you can see, RetroPie 4.6 with beta support for the Raspberry Pi 4. They go on saying that constant work is done with RetroPie and this will improve in time and I'm sure it will. But right now, it's still listed as a beta. Either way you look at it, it's still awesome to see this being released for the Pi 4, finally. Now we'll move down here to the change log. Changes since 4.5, Raspberry Pi 4 support. The image is now based on Raspbian Buster. Stretch is no longer supported by the Raspberry Pi, so all of these images that are released now and in the future until they change it up, is going to be raspy and buster. There's been some improvements to the RetroPie packaging system, and if you go into the RetroPie setup and try to update, it will only update if the updated binary is available. Now, in the past, you could just update right over what you had. It's the same exact release, and people thought they were getting new features and new improvements, but it was the same release you were already running. RetroArch has been updated to 1.85, a new notification system with Chivos badges support, and I will be doing a dedicated video on all of these new improvements. RGUI for RetroArch can now be themed, Support for real CD-ROM with the ability to dump the disk image. Now, this is something I wanted to cover in this video. Unfortunately, the USB CD-ROM drive that I have is pulling too much power from the Pi and it won't work properly. So I have ordered an externally powered USB DVD reader and hopefully that works. So I'll have that up in the next couple days. I'm gonna show you how to load PS1 games, Neo Geo CD, and a few others using a CD-ROM drive and RetroArch directly on your Raspberry Pi. Improved disk control system for games that use multiple disks or multiple cartridges, we can now use M3U files to easily swap through disks inside of RetroArch. Retro achievement support for PS1, Sega CD, and PC Engine CD have been added. Emulation Station has been updated to 2.91, and there's a lot of other new updates in here, mainly due to updating the cores. But one that I'm really happy about and very interested in is support for Redream on the Raspberry Pi 4. Now, Redream works amazingly well in Raspbian on the Raspberry Pi 4. We can run most games at full speed with this emulator here using the Raspberry Pi 4 and a little bit of an overclock. So I will be showing this off in the video. Instead of using Flycast or Raycast, I will be using Redream when we test this out. So it's here. It's ready to go, it's still in beta, but a lot of stuff is working great in here. So I'm gonna leave a link to the official RetroPie website. You can go ahead and download it, and I will have a full install and setup video coming up soon, so keep an eye on the channel. But now I think it's time to move over and just test out some of the harder to emulate systems that didn't work well on the Raspberry Pi 3, like Dreamcast, PSP, and N64. Keep in mind, I'm using the Raspberry Pi 4 4 gigabyte model, and I do have the CPU overclocked to 2.1 gigahertz. So with all this out of the way, Let's jump right into it and see how this new release performs. All right, so here it is, RetroPie running on the Raspberry Pi 4. Keep in mind, I am overclocked to 2.1 gigahertz on the CPU and 700 megahertz on the GPU. This will make a difference in the higher end games. But overall, performance has been great with this build of RetroPie for the Pi 4. And one thing I should have mentioned when I was going over the change log is the scraper is now fixed. I was able to scrape my games here with no issues at all and it worked really well. There was one that I missed with Dreamcast, and I think it was because it was named incorrectly. But overall, scraping is fixed in these newer builds of RetroPie, which is a big plus for a lot of people. Just like older builds, we have theme support. I've downloaded one here. We got Tronky Fran, one of my favorites. Video support. I added videos myself to a few of these systems just so I could take a look at it, and it works great. So yeah, I can tell you right now that even though this is beta, I've had really good luck with it. Now with the Raspberry Pi 4, if you want to go back to the older stuff, NES, Super Nintendo, PC Engine, Neo Geo, it's going to run just as well as it did on the Raspberry Pi 2, 3, or 3B+, even better in some cases. But I know a lot of people are super excited about the Raspberry Pi 4 because we do have a more powerful ARM CPU, and they want to be able to emulate Dreamcast, N64, and PSP at full speed. So those are the three main systems that I'm gonna test in this video. 
But before I get to that, I did want to test one PlayStation game. I just want to make sure we're getting the same performance as we did with the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, so we're going to go with Bloody Roar 2. So here's Bloody Roar 2. I definitely wanted to throw this in here just to make sure it was performing as well as the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. And as you can see, I do have the FPS up in the top right hand corner. We're at a constant 60 with this one, and this is definitely a harder one to emulate for PS1. So PS1 is good to go on the Pi 4. Moving over to some N64 using Mupin 64 Next. This is Mortal Kombat 4. Performance with this one is outstanding. As you can see, we're getting a really good frame right here, 60 FPS. Every once in a while, when there's a lot of effects on screen, I do notice a dip, but overall, I think it's performing pretty well. With each one of these games, I'm set to the 4x3 aspect ratio, and the resolution is set to 640x480. I didn't try dropping it down or taking it up any at all. Here we have Super Smash on the multiple Yoshi stage. Really good frame rate, everything seems to work pretty well, but just like Mortal Kombat 4, every once in a while I do notice a dip. You know I had to throw this one in there, GoldenEye 007, unfortunately performance here isn't really great. I'm still at 640x480 and if you drop the resolution down I'm sure it would help a bit, but overall this is just a problematic game for this emulator and this board. Moving over to PSP, I'm using the standalone version of PPSSPP, and with this overclock on the Raspberry Pi 4, running this version of RetroPie, performance is outstanding with a lot of the games that I tested. This is Tekken 5, 2x resolution with no hacks on. So I wanted to take it up a bit and test Tekken 6. If you mess around with the PSP emulator on low-end devices, you know this is a harder one to emulate. Not as bad as some of the others like God of War, but I'm at 2x resolution, no hacks on, I do have spline set to low, and we're getting full speed with Tekken 6 on the Raspberry Pi 4. Keep in mind, I am overclocked to 2.1 GHz on the CPU and 700 MHz on the GPU. So I wanted to go with 2x with Ratchet and Clank, but unfortunately I had to drop this down to 1x. I don't have any hacks on, no frame skip, and we're getting a constant 30 here. This is what it ran at originally on the PSP, and this is playable. I really wish we could have hit that 2x resolution mark, but overall, it's still playable at 1. And finally, for PSP, we have Chains of Olympus, 1x resolution, I have all the hacks on, and it's unplayable like this. So I'm going to go ahead and turn frame skip on. This is going to cut the FPS in half from 60 down to 30, which makes it more manageable. I mean, it is playable like this, but I'd like to have a better looking game. So we're going to try to go up to 2x resolution with that frame skip on. And unfortunately, it's not playable like this. So if you want to play Chains of Olympus on the Pi 4, 1x with frame skip will get you by. And finally, at least for this video, we have some Dreamcast emulation using the ReDream emulator. You will have to install this from the experimental section, but it works amazingly on the Raspberry Pi, especially with that overclock. As a lot of you might know, there is a premium version of ReDream. This allows you to upscale and have more save states, but this is the free version of ReDream built into this version of RetroPie for the Raspberry Pi 4. No upscaling is available, you get one save state, but it works great here. So I would stick with this, unless you really want to upscale a little bit. I do have a full video coming up on the channel showing you how to set up ReDream properly on the Raspberry Pi 4 using RetroPie, so if you're interested in that, definitely keep an eye on the channel. But here it is, running Marvel vs. Capcom 2 at full speed on the Raspberry Pi 4. We're at a constant 60, I do have the FPS listed up in the top left hand corner, and most every game that I've tested with this emulator works great on the Pi 4.
So all I can really say here is I'm thoroughly impressed with this beta build of RetroPie for the Raspberry Pi 4. They've done some really awesome work here, and performance has increased from the old Raspberry Pi 3 and 3B+, especially with that overclock on the Pi 4. Now in the end, it's still a beta, you might run into a few issues, but it's definitely worth trying out. This is one of the best retro front ends that I've tested on the Raspberry Pi 4 so far, and it's only going to get better from here. I know we waited a while for RetroPie to release, but I'm glad they took their time, because this is turning out to be one of the best RetroPie releases I've ever tested. And we'll have a few more videos coming up in the next few days. I definitely want to show you how to set up ReDream in this build here, and I'm also going to do a full install video, because there are people who are new to the Raspberry Pi and RetroPie who just picked up a Pi 4 specifically for this build. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below, but like always, thanks for watching.